Earlier this year, I found myself in a bit of a sticky situation. I had agreed to step in for somebody on vacation to edit a Sunday service for a church in my area. The only problem was, I was also going on vacation. It was Labor Day weekend, my dad had planned a family trip up to an awesome place called Lake Chelan in central Washington for almost a year. So it was a really big deal and I was gonna go be up there for about five days over Labor Day weekend. So I found myself in a sticky situation. I wanted to help, but I wasn't gonna be around and they couldn't film and do everything before I left. So to be totally honest, I was going to try and do a backdoor proxy editing workflow with Final Cut, which doesn't let you uh, do proxies that aren't generated inside that library in one specific location. If you copy and paste those proxy files, it wouldn't recognize them, they won't work. So I had to find a way to kind of jerry-rig the situation, literally mid-tutorial video, Final Cut Pro quits, which is pretty rare, and when I reopen it, it goes, congratulations, we've just updated to the newest version. Here's what's new. Believe it or not, they added an external proxy editing workflow. Needless to say, I was blown away by this. So it worked out so well for me, I decided to make a video about how to do external remote proxy editing inside Final Cut Pro. For any of you watching this who may have a remote editor or want to use a remote editor for your projects. Now before we dive into my computer and I screen share how to do this with you, just a quick reminder that if you have questions about gear or are trying to upgrade your live streaming or broadcast studio setup for video or audio or anything like that, make sure you check out the free church video gear guide in the description below. I know there are a million options out there for cameras, lenses, lights, microphones, live streaming gear. It's, it's really overwhelming. So what I did is I handpicked two or three things that work best based on budgets so that you can find what you're looking for and know you're getting the right kind of gear. All right, let's jump into Final Cut Pro and learn how to do this external proxy editing process. All right, now I am in Final Cut Pro. I have got my original library here that I've called external proxy editing, just because that's what we're talking about today. And I have got some clips in here um, that are just from another, I think, camera review video, but just something so we can work with. It's small, it doesn't take a lot of time, but you can see over here, 4K original uh, clips here. Uh, I have already made proxies as I've kind of tested this process out, but we're looking at the originals right now. You can see it says view optimized originals. So let's say, yeah, you want to, um, you know, make a copy of this project and send the proxy files to somebody else remotely or, or for yourself later or whatever it is. Um, you've got to now go and copy this library and basically make a duplicate. So what you're going to do, select the library. You can do this for events and even individual projects, but if you're sending a whole event, say you're sending, you know, like a, a church service or something else, you can either select the event if everything's in there. For me, uh, it's just simpler to do the entire library. Um, but I'm going to go in there and I'm going to click copy to library and I don't have any one already made, so I'm gonna hit new library. Now I want to call it the you know external proxy editing proxy, just so I know it's the same library, but it's the proxy version, otherwise you can't tell them apart. I do wanna put it on my desktop, desktop excuse me, because I do wanna eject the external hard drive I'm, I'm using um, to simulate being you know a remote editor, so I did that and now it just wants to ask for some preferences. So yes, you do want to include the media um, and you want to include the proxy media. So if you do library without media, it'll just take the library and whatever instructions are in there, but you need to send your proxy media to your external editor, your remote editor. And this is the simplest way to do that. So you want to select that, select proxy, select this, uh, so that you know if you don't have media in the library, I, I pretty much never put my media in the library. I put it all in one folder, um, just so it's easier for me to copy and paste libraries around and make copies. Um, and you want to go to modify settings. So the default is to put it in the library itself, um, but what you want to do, or even the folder, sorry, in library is going to be the library. That should be what you see. I see it in the folder. That's how I always set things up just so that they're all separated. But what I want to do is I want to send that to the desktop as well so that the files um, are going to be right next to the library on the desktop. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to create that duplicate library. When I hit OK here, 
And now you see I have my original library here and here's the new proxy version. So before we get too far um, down the road, what I'm gonna do is quit Final Cut Pro real quick. I'm gonna go to Finder, check my desktop. I see that I've got my library and my proxy media and a bunch of other stuff here. And I'm going to eject this two terabyte drive that all the original stuff was on. And now I'm just gonna open up this uh, proxy version of this library here. Okay, so at this point, essentially what I've done is I've separated myself from all the original media and I could be anywhere in the world right now as long as I have like via Dropbox or some other you know cloud service received the proxy files and received the proxy version of the library. Um, and so it is kind of important when you make proxy files the first time when you go to transcode. Um, mine were already made so it didn't ask me, but if you were to go to assets here and hit transcode media, um, it's gonna bring up a dialog box. Obviously, you wanna create proxies. It won't let me do that because I have already done that. Um, but you can choose between H.264 or ProRes, and then you can actually choose the size of your proxy media, which is pretty exciting. Um, I recommend if you're shooting in 1080p HD, set it like this, ProRes proxy 50%. That's still gonna be good enough to see um, and ProRes does edit a little bit bigger, or sorry, it is a little bit bigger, but it edits faster because of the fact of it being ProRes. It's easier to read for your computer to make adjustments. If you're really worried about size, you can do H.264 and keep this the same size, but your file overall volume will be down. If you're shooting in 4K, I would um, you know, pick which one over one of these you have room for in your cloud service based on how big your project is, but I would go at least 25%, maybe 12 and a half. Um, 12 and a half on HD is basically impossible. You can't even see what you're doing. So if you're expecting your editor to do any kind of color uh, correcting, um, you just can't even see what you're looking at. So I would just say don't get carried away by making this so small. Um, you can make it really small, but you have to kind of balance whether it's usable or not. So uh, I'd say 50%, 25 is the smallest I would go for HD to 4K. Uh, 25 is the biggest I would do. 12 and a half looks pretty good too. So. Um, let's cancel that out. All right, so now that I've got this new library open, it is not set over to proxy files. So don't panic when you see missing file, nothing happens. So I wanna go look at proxy only and look, it knows exactly where they are and it's matched them up. And you should be able to see that this is quite a bit blurrier than before. Um, and I can see over here, it says proxy right here. It's still a 4K file, so I'm not making a smaller file dimension, which would really screw things up in our project. Uh, but it is a proxy version and it only has a proxy version here. There's no original. So just to double check that things uh, went according to plan, uh, they have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my project, I'm gonna call this proxy edit. This can be whatever your church service is. Um, let's see if I think everything was at 24. Uh, 1080p project, that sounds great. Um, and let's just drag and drop these clips in. So I'm hitting the E key to do a append edit and then shift Z is gonna fill the frame. Um, and these look fine. So what I wanna do is just make some basic edits. So I'm just gonna do something. Um, I'm gonna just shorten these clips up, command T to throw a basic crossfade transition there. Uh, I'm gonna put an effect on this. Let's do black and white so that I can see that. And then let's put like a, you know, really stylized, you know, flow dissolve here and play that cool and then I want to throw a generator on there as well just you know to simulate so I'll hit E to put that at the end just to simulate like an end screen and I'll cut that to give me room another command T crossfade so logo screen whatever I don't need this to be a big you know full-fledged project but I do want to show like yes editing has occurred right so that we can see that it copied back to the original library. So let's just say this is my full project, whether it's a, a service video, an announcement video, any kind of video, I have done the editing. Um, so what I wanna do now is I wanna close Final Cut Pro X and I'm gonna be like, hey, I did it, it's great. Um, and then I'm going to reconnect my two terabyte drive. All right, my two terabyte drive has shown up. I've got it over here. And what I'm gonna do is essentially simulating, obviously it's just you know from my desktop to my drive, but it's the same process as what would have happened uh, through Dropbox or Google Cloud or something like that, as I'm just gonna take the library itself. I don't need to copy the media with me. Hit Command C, 
and I'm gonna hit Command V and I'm gonna paste it into my two terabyte drive. Um, and then what I'm going to do is open up um, both libraries. So I'm gonna open up the original library and then what I'm going to do is open up the proxy version of that library as well. So you can see right now I've got that proxy edit immediately open and I can see the files. And what I need to do essentially is relink this project into the original library and then connect it to the original full size clips. So what I need to do is go kind of simulate the process I did the first time when I copied the library, but this time I'm just gonna copy the project. So now I'm gonna select the project. I don't need to make another library. I need to put this you know, project into this library. So I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna drag it into the event assets and it's gonna ask me some questions, same as before. Now. This time you do wanna do it without media. I already have the media in the original library, so I don't need to move it. All I need to move are the instructions, which is why if you're the remote editor, you don't need to send anything back over Dropbox. You just need to update and send back the edited library with the updated instructions, which is usually a few megabytes in size. It's a very small file because it's just code. It's just instructions. There's no media attached. So that's what we're simulating here between the desktop and the external drive again. So I just wanna send the project. Um, I don't need to worry about media destination right now because we're gonna relink to you know the original files. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so now that that has copied into the assets folder successfully of the library I want, I actually don't need this library open and it's just gonna confuse me. So let's go ahead and close that. And now we just have our original library open with you know, the new project here, the project that's been copied in. So I'm gonna open that from this library. If you don't close the previous library, you're gonna be, you know, not really gonna be able to tell which one you're talking to, which project's open, because there's a copy in each library. So let's just make it simple. I've just got the original library open. Here's the proxy version of that. You can see all the edits did transfer over, just like I had done before. But now when I go to optimized original footage, look, it immediately sharpens up because it's immediately reconnected to the original footage I had before. It's as simple as that. So this is a huge upgrade for Final Cut Pro. It's able to manually, automatically find and relink both proxies and original files. Uh, whereas before, if you moved anything regarding proxy files, it would just totally lose them. You could not move those files. They had to be remade every single time which is a huge pain because that meant you had to share the original files uh, or really do some crazy work around. So this is a huge time saver and it allows you to really you know, edit anywhere and uh, whether it's you or somebody else, um, be able to get these projects done and pretty seamlessly as long as you have some space on a, on a you know, large business size Dropbox or Google Drive, um, actually send pretty low res, low, you know, low file size files get everything done and then you know three clicks later everything just reconnects automatically back to the full size things and you can go export here master file and you know you're good to go so that is how you set up an external proxy editing workflow inside final cut pro and i hope that's been super helpful for you all right guys i hope this has been really helpful for you no matter what program you edit in to understand this workflow I really hope that this can help you in the future. If you need help with projects and you know someone who can edit, now you have a way to actually have them help you if you're not close enough to physically drive and transfer hard drives or other file types. If you're still pre-recording and you're shooting stuff on a Thursday, it can be turned around and back to you by Saturday or maybe even Friday if they work fast. Again, check out the free church video gear guide if you're looking for tips on the right kind of camera gear for your church. And if you wanna to talk to somebody, not just even about live streaming, but about doing online ministry in general, pre-recorded, live streamed, or both, make sure you click the link below, get on my calendar, let's talk and get you the answers that you need. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.